We now invite representatives of our partner countries to give their special address. We are honored to invite His Excellency Takeshi Yagi, Ambassador, Embassy of Japan in India, Meti Japan, for his special address. Honorable Chief Minister of Gujarat, Mr. Narendra Modi, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for giving me the privilege of addressing today's vibrant Gujarat Summit 2013 on behalf of the government of Japan and the business community of Japan. Since my arrival in India last year, I am truly impressed by the dynamism and endowments of India and its people. One of the important events in the early months of my tenure is my trip to Gujarat. It was indeed an eye-opener to observe and understand at first hand the importance of this state through visits to such places as the BRT Corridor, Svarmati Riverfront, and Gift City, and I shouldn't forget Ashram. And it is a great pleasure that this time I'm visiting Gujarat with a huge business delegation from Japan to feel the vibrancy of this amazing state. Japan and India are bound in many ways. The complementarity of our strengths and advantages, in other words, the advanced technology and financial capacity of Japan on the one hand, and the demographics and huge market of India on the other, is an important attribute which makes our partnership a natural win-win relationship. Furthermore, as the global economy is now facing uncertainties in various fronts, our partnership should and can contribute to prosperity and sustainable development of not only our two nations, but of the region and the wider world. With regard to the regional implication, implication of our cooperation, I believe that there is an increasingly important role for India and Japan to play in connecting the diverse economies of the region and beyond. The Japanese economy has become, over decades, highly integrated with the East Asian economies. Meanwhile, India's trade is growing with ASEAN and Northeast Asia. The two regions account for about 10 and 18 percent of India's trade, respectively. The two FTAs, namely India ASEAN FTA and Japan India SEPA, together with the recently launched RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership will help bring the three markets of Japan, India, and ASEAN further close, uh, closer. On the west front of the subcontinent, there are equally exciting new opportunities unfolding. In April last year, Toyota cars, which rolled out of the Bangalore factory, left Chennai port and headed for the African market. In August the same year, Nissan India has started exporting automobiles uh, from its Chennai plant to the Middle East. And in December, Hitachi and Panasonic have unveiled their new business strategies to invest more than 5,700 crore rupees in India the coming years to make India 
their base to expand their business in Africa and the Middle East and in the Southeast Asia. These recent events are transformational in that key Japanese companies are beginning to perceive India as platform of export and a strategic hub to connect the emerging regional markets. We wish to encourage th this important trend and we think that our cooperation in infrastructure projects such as the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor or the Chennai-Bangalore Industrial Corridor will be instrumental for strengthening the connectivity. And Gujarat is a key state in this entire picture. Gujarat occupies the largest area in DMIC, and Gujarat has been attracting foreign, foreign direct investment from around the world. Thanks to its superior port and road connectivity, as well as abundant power capacity. Ten years ago, there are only six Japanese companies operating in Gujarat, but now there are 60. <clears throat> However, new bottlenecks will eventually emerge as industrial concentration develops. For example, stable and equal, uh, quality supply of water, skilled labor, environmental problem, problems due to uh, rapid uh, urbanization. But in tho those areas, the government of Japan can be of help in the form of technical cooperation. Last but not least, I wish to emphasize the Japanese government's strong interest in assisting the Indian aspiration to introduce the high-speed railway. We understand that the first line is planned to be laid between Ahmedabad and Mumbai. In this connection, I had the pleasure of announcing that our government will be holding two conferences in the coming months in cooperation with the state of Gujarat, one on high-speed railway and the other on urban traffic development. In closing, I'd like to once again thank the Honorable Chief Minister and Government of Gujarat for giving us this opportunity to flag our interest in and express our commitment to promoting Japanese investment and business in Gujarat. I wish you a big success of this conference and thank you very much for your kind attention. I wish you all a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency.